Holy crap. <laughs> Let's just see. Oh. Okay. Not I think bad. we're I think do you want to start over? I would love to start over. Nine people. Right? <sighs> we're also mirrored for some reason. I can't. Oh that. no. Somebody somebody thread this for me. Are you serious? I'm serious. Give me a thread or case. Here, I'll do it. Whatever. That's just entertain the people. Hey everyone. So sorry about the technical delays. This is our first night doing this. We had a computer crash. Then we had it like black and white stuff. So thanks for bearing with us. We really appreciate that. Scissors. And Matt is re uh threading my pocket for me. Um Gosh, it's like a comedy of errors right here. And thanks for sticking with us. Um, you know, we're not really IT people. And, um, you know, we're trying to make all this work. So, um, you know, IT department is just, and we've got a dog that's gone crazy, shop dog. So, um, anyway, tonight we're going to cover some awesome swing flies. And I have, I'm a little fried. Um, I just got done guiding, I don't know how many days in a row on the big man SD. Um, but I'm, I'm going to share with you guys tonight, everyone that's, that's tuned in and on our uh, YouTube channel, a really good goby pattern. It can also be like a sculpin. Uh, SD, we also have some wood perch. So many times when it's bright out so with something that is <clears throat> more along the lines, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> of like a goby type pattern many times i've had throwing something really big uh and burly out at those fish and, and i get a, a you know a grab a pull whatever you want to call it i'll immediately switch to this pattern and uh i developed this one morning over coffee um i i was getting ready for a swing trip and got up extra early waiting for everything to, to brew. And I, I, I was like, you know, I, I think this is going to come up, uh, you know, really good. So, and it, and it worked. It was a really proven pattern at the time. And it's proven to catch a lot of fish for me. <clears throat> By no means, folks, did I come up with this pattern other than the color scheme. You know, all this is pretty much based on developing patterns here on the Great Lakes. And I think those these type of color schemes and flash patterns have, have spread, you know, all over the country for, you know, steelhead. So one of the things that I always ask when I'm out there uh, on the river is I ask the plug guys, Hey, what color are you getting them on? You know, Oh, gold, you know, black and copper, you know, so that's kind of the, the color scheme. And you develop that through years of experience. And, and like I said, this is a really good sunny day pattern. Um, and, and one of my favorites to tie, it's super quick and easy. Um, I start with the Daiichi. Hi, Storm. You decided you needed a bunch of attention all of a sudden now, too? Go back to your bed. Um, so we're using the Daiichi 2461, and I'm tying this in a one knot. You could tie this on a shank um, and, and do a trailer off the back. This is a really effective color scheme, um, and I, I would think that it would work great lakes tributary um because of the, the bait fish steelhead are starting to forage more and eating more goby just like lake trout everything else so i'm gonna start with wrapping some thread on my hook these are super easy guide patterns right i mean this is you know gonna end up in a log in um you know bottom of the river whatever maybe in a tree so I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I don't have to worry about marrying wings or anything like that. I'm trying to imitate a bait fish pattern um, and kind of hit those color schemes that the guys are hitting them on plugs. So that's kind of the basis of this, this pattern. And I'm going to start with some dyed UV polar chenille. And I'm going to use this as a base for olive. And... Um, I'm just going to wrap, I'm going to use this as my body. And I'm going to wrap this forward. And I'm probably going to go about, I don't know, three quarters of the way up the shank. 
of the hook. And I'm just going to wrap this around, move it forward. You know, I don't use my bodkin holder. Not super technical. I'm just trying to whip out some flies that are going to catch some fish. And, you know, I'm going to take a couple of turns there. Just pinch that off. And there's just going to be the, the hook body right there. And then from this point, it's pretty easy. I'm going to cut some rabbit strip. I'm going to tie this in. And, you know, if I'm not tying a shank fly, I don't want this to tail off too far. So like that right there is too far because I don't want them to short strike this. I want to about maybe that much off the back of my, the bend of the hook. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this in. And I'm just going to wrap that a couple of times. And I'm going to just snip that rabbit hair off there. And that's going to essentially be kind of my wing for this fly, if you think about it that way. Might put a couple more wraps on there just to secure that so it doesn't twist. I don't want this to, to twist up on me. And then I'm going to take some flashaboo, and I like this perch color flashaboo. And, you know, you can go with as much flash here. You know, the dirtier the water, the more flash I'm going to go with. But typically, I'm just going to pull a chunk about like this out of my pack. And I'm going to lay that where the flash is going to come to about the end of the tail, right? I'm going to have some extra here in the front, but I'm just going to lash that down with a couple of turns with my thread. And I'm going to take the rest of this flash aboo and I'm just going to fold this over. So it's going to kind of double it up just like that. And just give it a little bit more flash. You know, I like, I like the amount of flash that I have here. And then from this point, I'm going to stack a little bit of um, ice dub. So we're gonna be using olive ice dub. And basically I'm gonna create a hump right here. You can see the amount of space I've left myself for the rest of the fly. And again, you know, the, the guys that are plug fishing you know, this is about the size of the plug that they're using. And I'm just going to kind of clump this, or if you want, you can kind of dub this right onto your thread. And I'm just going to wrap this around and kind of create a collar, basically. So it gives me a little bit of body there. And what I'm going to do for the next step is add some copper. I don't know what it is about copper, but if there's any hint of clouds, copper, a little bit of copper flash in these flies really seems to, you know, appeal to the fish, get a little bit of uh, aggressive action from those. So I'm just going to tie in a little bit of copper. Again, you know, this is like one of those things, I'm going to fold this back. I can put as much flash in here as I want. And then, so I like that copper and that perch color. It looks really good in the water. You put this in the water, it has a nice glimmer to it. And I'm going to just add just a little bit bigger of a hump here with some more ice dub. You could add weight to this if you wanted. You could add eyes to it. I'm going to push this back just a little bit. So there I have a nice clean spot. The body from underneath, underside view from the fish is going to look really good. It's going to have some sparkle to it. It's going to have some form here in a minute. And on all my bait fish type patterns, I like to use uh, some mallard flank. So we're going to do this. We're going to do a a collar, and this is kind of a traditional thing from the West Coast, um, is is having something like this as a as a collar. You could use pretty much any type of feather for this. Um, like if you want to put a guinea in here, that kind of looks cool too. Um, 
but I'm going to wrap this and I really don't care. Like, okay, I want to cut it to come back, but if it doesn't, I'm going to force it back with the thread and the head. And I kind of like to get this bushy feel from this fly where I have a lot of that webbing out like this. I'm just going to trim that stem and I'm going to, going to pull this back and kind of, this is going to lay that down, right? It's going to give me some, some breakup um, from the whole, um, you know, color scheme and kind of give it those barred stripes, maybe like a wood perch, maybe like the stripes on a goby. Um, so from that point, I'm just going to add my ice dub head. And I'm going to clump this on, just clump it on almost like you'd spin deer hair. I'm just going to take a big clump of this and I'm going to lay it right on top. And I'm basically going to do just two wraps, right? There's my head. And then I'm going to start massaging this ice dove back. And basically I'm going to open up my little eye space. And with the thread, I'm going to kind of force that to become the head of the fly. Hope you can see that. Um, I mean, basically, that's the look of the fly. And I'm going to just pull out any of those loose fibers. And I'm going to whip finish this head. And we're going to be done. So you can sit down and tie up several of these pretty quickly, right? And you can see it's a, a very quick and easy pattern to tie. And it's super, super effective. Um, again, you could put this on a shank uh, with a trailer. I might make it a little bit longer. Um, I do like this smaller profile uh, on the brighter sunny days. So this is kind of my starting point. And you can see here, like I've tied up some, you know, different versions of this um, with different color schemes, but this goby pattern with the colors I talked to you about um, really is, is one of my top patterns. So that's the unweighted version. And we're gonna tie up a weighted version. So we're gonna put some eyes in this. I kinda- Why would you do a weighted versus a non? You know, that's a good question, Matt. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, depends on the flows. Um, whether or not I'm gonna add some weight to the fly depends on the type of water I'm fishing. So if I want to get over the logs and really get down, you know, on bright sunny days, those fish get off those sand flats, they get out of the tail out pools and they, they start hugging the timber. And, you know, by swinging flies, this really allows you to go after the, you know, more aggressive Great Lakes fish. You know, I think compared to the West Coast, our fish, you know, our fish are the top of the food chain out in Lake Michigan. And they're kind of lazy, right? So they don't have to worry about killer whales and seals. And, you know, they don't eat shrimp necessarily. But if you, if you mimic something here in the Great Lakes um, that's within their color scheme and food base, you're going to get that ag aggressive fish that might otherwise, you know, not strike, let's say, an egg pattern or a nymph or something like that. So you're looking for that specific fish here in the Great Lakes it's going to be the most aggressive fish in that run, in that pool, uh, what have you. So uh, the weighted version is simply just, you could put a, a lead weight on here. Um, I really like these holographic uh, sinews, uh, psychedelic kind of bead chain. Um, again, I'm just going to start simply by cutting my thread, uh, my hook with thread, and then... I could go ahead and tie in my beads now, but I typically just tie in my body. And again, I'm gonna wrap this up, you know, to, to show you here. I mean, I don't necessarily use my arm, obviously, because this thread doesn't build up. I'm not worried about it. It's not a dry fly. And I'm gonna um, take this body material and go about three quarters of the way up to the eye of my hook. Take a couple extra wraps. I don't know, that disguises the hook. 
whatever it is. Then I'm going to go ahead and, and tie in my B chain eyes. And, you know, the, the great thing about weights is you can adjust this. Like if I'm fishing a pattern like this and I feel like it's not getting down, I'll simply put like a 1 16th ounce or 1 32nd ounce worm weight right in the front of that and get it down. So if I need it to get down faster, I'll do it that way. Um, so I like to take, it's kind of weird, but I'll do the four B chains on this um, because it's going to help me get a bigger profile for that head. Don't use your good scissors. Use the ones that are in the shop. Right, those, are the ahead. Ones are, those are my good scissors. I know. Oh, <laughs> sorry, dude. Packaging, right? That's right. So cut three instead of uh, four. So much for my readers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to foot wrap figure eight, my B chain eyes, and I'm going to set this back a little bit. You can see here, I have it set back a little bit from the eye of my hook, and that's going to allow me to build a head around this. And it's going to give that head profile a little bit more, plus a little bit of weight. Right when it gets down, it's going to add a little bit of weight. I'm going to back my thread. Oh, a quarter inch uh, behind my B chain eyes. And I'm going to go ahead and just tie in my wing material. So I'm going to tie in some olive zonker rabbit strip. And I want this to come back. Oh, I don't know three quarters of an inch away from the bend of my hook. So that's simply my wing material. And then I'm gonna add my flash boo. Again, the flash boo perch is kind of the basis of this pattern. It has some reds, some greens, it's all holographic. So it has a lot of, a lot of flash. This provides a lot of movement to the fly. And that's kind of what we're looking for, is we want that fly to have that movement and we want it to really in, entice that aggressive fish to bite. So I'm just gonna lay this on top. I may spread it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna just secure that with a couple of wraps. Um, and that looks pretty good. I'm not gonna use this extra flash. Sometimes I'll pull that back, but maybe in a more low water condition, um, I'm going to tie this up kind of for a sunny day. So once I have that back there, again, I'm just going to add some olive dub. This is going to add some bulk to it and then um, allow that next step. Um, and this time I'm going to go ahead and just palmer it right on here. Spin my dubbing head right there. And all this extra material I can kind of push back, right? So that's going to give me a little bit of a hump there to lay in the copper. I'm going to lay in just a little bit of copper here. Again, copper kills steel with it. And I'm just going to add just a little bit more of that copper to the top of this fly. And I'm going to just crank that down. Pull out any of that excess. A few copper strands in there. Main looks really, really fishy. Um, and every time I tie one of these, I always just kind of picture that fish that's going to go after this. You know, you've kind of visualized catching fish with every fly you tie. That's the beauty of tying flies. Um, so I've got a little bit of copper in there off the top. And now I'm going to take uh, my mallard. And I'm gonna create a collar with this. And again, this kind of, I don't know, it's just, it's super fishy. It's kind of like peacock, right? For me, with any type of bait fish patterns, I like to get this um, 
kind of mallard wing flare, right? And I like this big collar. I like it going every direction. It's a sloppy looking fly, right? But it's going to catch fish. So I'm going to pull this back. And I try and capture as many of those fibers as I can on the way back. Doing this live is kind of nerve-wracking to be honest. All right, so I'm going to, I have my collar. This is going to look really cool once it gets wet. Now I'm going to take my ice dub and I'll probably do this in a couple of different steps with those eyes. So I'm going to take a big clump of it and I'm just going to kind of wad this up, right? I'm going to stack some right on top. Then I'm gonna flip this over. That looks pretty good down below. So I'm not gonna add another clump there. I'm gonna go ahead and move forward in front of my eyes. Now I'm gonna take a big clump of this. And over the eyes, this is gonna look really, really cool, especially once you get this fly wet. So I'm gonna take a sizable clump and I just kind of divide this up a little bit and I'm just gonna strap this in almost like you'd spin deer hair right any type of wool that sort of thing and that gives me a nice bright big profile head i'm just going to simply pull this back work this back with my fingertips and a little bit of thread and voila i have it right so few half hitches we're all good i don't even bother with head cement um the life of these flies is not going to be um you know you might fish it all day and not hang up in a log jam um but you know it's probably not going to last more than one or two outings and then i just take this kind of stroke all the extra fibers out with my hand and now i have this awesome little goby pattern that is like guaranteed to catch fish on the Great Lakes tributaries. So, um, you know, we, I sat down, I tied a few flies, you know, these are simple flies. You can fill a box up pretty quickly, you know, take an afternoon and, and play with different color schemes um, in order to, to kind of come up with what you, what you feel, um, you know, those those fish are going to key in on. Sometimes I'll, I'll take the same type of pattern, use, you know, a different body. So this is um, a different color. So more of a muted color with that brown in there that pulls out some brown and I'll throw like an orange head on there. So um, one of the patterns I came up with Kind of after um, the, the trash can, I think it is, that Kevin ties, um, I was just playing around, you know, warming up, doing some tying, thinking about that black and blue type fly, right? So on a darker day, I'm, I might fish this black and blue um, with a little bit of that copper and black. And it, let's just tie up one of those. I like the way it turned out. I like that profile, I like the bait fish look. Um, you know, obviously, if you're not getting a reaction out of out of a, a spot where you think there are fish, switch up colors. You know, don't be afraid to keep switching up flies. I mean, think of how many times we switch up flies when we're fishing streamers. Is it an olive bite? Is it a white bite? Is it, a, you know, a natural looking buff color bite? I kind of approach steelhead the same way. Um, you know, I think about where the eggs are in the system as far as, you know, the color wise, I do the same thing when I, when it comes to swing flies and, you know, the, 
the patterns that you know come up black and blue purple and chartreuse all that this this little black and blue pattern right here is is really uh, a great pattern for there you go um like i said a little bit darker day so this would be similar size if i'm getting a grab or a half you know feel like a fish is in there i may switch immediately to something like this and for this one i like a black thread do you want to answer a question first yeah peter asked this mostly for swinging or do you ever strip these flies you know uh that's a great question peter thank you for and when in. would you strip you know all um, that i typically don't i i typically use all of these uh you know a swing type pattern by the time we're targeting our steelhead in the great lakes it's it's winter um and so those fish are in slower pools uh we're looking for kind of that solitary fish you're not looking for like a you know a pot of fish you know the other day i was out and we we were doing floats and we hit four fish just boom 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 they were all skippers it was pretty awesome but you know, like a swing fly, you're probably only going to get one of those. It's the most aggressive fish. You're not get. It's like Euro nymphing versus streamer fishing, right? You're going to get every fish behind that rock versus maybe that one player. Um, so that's that's the way I approach these. I want to get their attention, but I don't want to scare them necessarily with this. Um, so good question. I you probably could strip these too. I guess I don't know. I haven't really tried that. Um, sometimes through my swing, I will, you know, bounce the rod tip and I'll have my clients, you know, animate that fly a little bit more. Um, you know, if it's a slow day, try something different, mix it up a little bit, always be, you know, trying new things. Don't be afraid. Um, so this pattern, we're going to start with, um, I like copper, you know, kind of see, and this is this UV chenille copper we're going to use this as the basis for our, our body on on the hook with this one and this is a long really nice fiber and i'm just going to tie this in and i i try and start it with the fibers going back right but what this is really going to do is just add some body to the fly i just move my hook forward and then i try to align all my fibers so they're going to come off the back side of the material here. I'm just gonna wrap this forward. Again, pretty simple, right? About three quarters of the way up the hook, hook shank. I'm just gonna nip it there and I'm just gonna kind of massage these fibers back and that's gonna provide the body of my fly. And I'm gonna lay some black rabbit strip over the top of this. Again, all these you could tie lots of different ways. Um, you could definitely tie them on shanks. So this one, yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe I can always modify this once I get on the river if I feel like those fish are short striking. You know, if we're getting grabs and I'm not getting hookups, I may shorten this rabbit strip uh, just a little bit. And that's the nice thing about you could tie this as a tube fly. Um, you can set that hook back further. I know Matt and I, when we were out the other day, he got a really great grab on a purple fly, and then he moved the hook shank back a little bit, retied, kind of like we had a recanoeter tonight with the whole like computer thing, <laughs> um, you know. But he moved it back, and he got that fish on the next cast. So um, you know, don't be afraid to play around with this. Sometimes. You know, I always bring scissors with me in the boat. I'll trim some flash off. If I feel like my flies are too flashy, you know, I may modify these when I'm on the river. It's kind of like uh, taking your weed guard off when you're, you know, bass fishing and they're not, you know, you feel like you're not getting the hookups. So don't be afraid to modify your flies, whether it's dry fly, or whatever. So anyway, I'm going to ha have my basis here. With the black, I'm going to take this rainbow colored flashaboo. And this has black, it has blue, just a, a myriad of different colors. And this has a little bit of kink to it. So, um, 
it, it adds a little bit of extra body to the fly. So I'm just going to kind of spread this out a little bit, lay it behind the fly, and I'm going to wrap this, tie it in. Right? This is a great fly for like a November, late November, early December day. Um, there's maybe a little bit of sun, sunlight, partly cloudy skies, you know, decent, you know, three to four foot visibility, you know, put some flash in there. And I'm going to take the blue. And I'm going to just make that little hump here. So on the top of this hump, so make my hump. That's going to be part of the body of that fly right there. And then, again, I'm going to add just a few strands of copper. Because especially on those cloudy days, I don't know what it is, but copper, like I have said, really seems to get the fish. So I'm just going to lay a little bit of copper over the back of this. Take a couple of wraps, and because I already have a pretty good clump of copper there, say that five times, um, I'm not going to fold the rest of that back. And that's going to give me that copper, blue, black look, right? Then um, I'm going to take my trusty mallard wing. What are you doing with that to prep it? So what I'm going to do is just going to separate out the fibers a little bit. I'm going to tie this in tip first. And I just, you know, want to tie that right in. I'm just going to wrap this around. And this one I may want to try and keep that so the feather points are tilting back but again if they don't like it starts to splay forward that's quite all right just tie it off and I find that this mallard wing really does like again add that segregation to the body and then when those wings run opposite gives it just a little bit bigger profile um, as it's coming across the water. You know, you, th you visualize this fly coming, coming across what that fish sees. That's always what I think about as I'm, as I'm spay fishing. Like, what does my presentation look like? Make sure um, that my fly is coming down before my, you know, tip, any of the heavy stuff that they can see. And I'm just going to take a clump of this blue, and I'm going to add it right to the head of this. And I'll kind of let that spin and just kind of see how that spun a little bit. And then just kind of pull that back, put a few turns of thread in the back. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Maybe I'm going to add a little bit more on that side. So I'm just going to clump that in. Pull a little bit back, and that kind of gives me that whole blue look throughout the whole fly with that copper flash, and just whip finish it. Cut it, and it's ready to go. And if you take a look at this profile, and that looks super, super sexy, right? Dark, dark day, dark fish. You know, dark fly, dark day. Light fly, something more natural looking. Um, so that's, that's kind of the swing fly thing. 
like I said, you can fill your box pretty quickly with different color schemes. Um, those are the two color schemes that we kind of covered here this evening. And, you know, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for bearing with us through all the technical difficulties. And, uh, you know, look for, a, we're really looking forward to providing you uh, here at the Northern Angler tying every Wednesday night, um, just a break you know, take some time out, you know, this whole COVID thing, everybody's all stressed out. I'm stressed out. I'm anxious. Like, are they going to close us down? What's going to go on? Um, so, you know, take some time out, tie some flies, fill your boxes on the time that you're not fishing. And, uh, you know, when you get out there make the most of it. Bart Roberts from Indiana says hi. Hey, Bart. How's it going, man? Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. Randy says hi. Randy, what's going on, man? Grizzly flies. Grizzly flies, dude. We're all over. Uh, so let's see. You know, we want to CK. acknowledge everybody out there. Thanks, CK, Think about for tuning hitting in. The subscribe button. Oh yeah. It'll be better next week. <laughs> Promise you, we're gonna work on all these details. We wanted and, to set the bar. <laughs> you know, obviously set the bar very low tonight. Thanks for bearing with us, everyone. Um, super embarrassing, but hey, you know, laugh about it, right? We're a fly shop. <laughs> we're not like it experts um you know we go out and catch fish we tie guide files you know it's it's not we're not super technical tires you know we just we just go have fun with it right and, and that's what it's all about right we're supposed to have fun while fishing so anyway thanks everyone for tuning in tonight we'll see you next week hopefully we have all the bugs worked out and uh you know hit our subscribe button check out our other time videos we have a lot more to come, much more in store for you. Uh, and thanks again.